Hey guys, Tracy here. Today's video, we are going to be talking about reach and grab, utilizing the affected side to pick things up and reach and grab. Simple as it says, reach, grab something and pull it back in. So there is a video previous on my channel that talks about reach and grab. And over time, you get better once you start doing things repetitively. So today, what we're gonna do is a reach and grab but we are going to fill the glass up with water. So therefore, talking to another doctor that pretty much specializes in neuroscience with the brain and how it works and reacts to different things and retraining the mind and the brain. He was watching the video and he was analyzing the previous video, which was great theory, as error actually helps to fuel the brain to figure out to say, hey, that was done incorrectly, let me now figure out the proper way to do it. So the video previous, I was showing you about the reach and grab and I had an empty cup. So in the video, I actually dropped the cup and I was like, well, I'm glad it's not water in here because then it would be water all over me. But in reality, guess what? If the water was in there, it would be a reaction for the brain to say, whoa, that's improper form. That's not how you pick that, that, that up. That's not how you do that. So it would actually fuel the brain to say, Hey, let's think faster. Let's pick this up so we won't have another one of these incidents. So, anywho, that's why we're doing a video on reach and grab, but with the glass full of versus half full. You know the whole optimism thing, but anywho. So, reach and grab it is. Let's go right to it. So, I have two different cups we have here. I have one that has no handles, it's plastic cups, so you can actually grab this a little more. You can trust your grip a little better, in my opinion. And then I have a mug here that has a handle so you can use the handle or you can actually grab the edge or the width of the cup. So anywho, we have this full glass here of water. Uh, I could pick it up with the left only, but since it's full, I'm gonna use both left and right. And I just did this and I wanted it to be clear so you can see that I'm filling them up with water. Uh, this may not be able to, feel. okay. Not up to the T, but we're gonna get the water in both of these so we know we're actually challenging ourselves. So, that is empty. I'm leaving it over there and we're going to our reach and grab. So I'm just so happy to start off with this one. I'm gonna put this one over to the side. So my effective side was my left hand, with my left side, so I'm utilizing this so it may be better for you guys to do this using both. I should have actually done that with using, you know what, I will go and grab that. One second. Excuse me. This actually takes me to the thing I was gonna show you next with the whole mirror therapy. But anywho, this glass to the left is full and this one is empty. But I just wanted to show you how this works if you're still in the beginning phases of getting that affected side back to its normal utilization and just getting your body used to do doing more with it. This actually helps a lot better when you're mimicking what you're doing on the affected side and non-affected side. So with the reaching grab, I'm gonna start off with both just to show you how it does make a difference. So being that this, your non-affected side is your dominant side, when you go to grab something, it's without thought, when you pick it up, boom. Toss it, do whatever, you still have control. When your affected side, it takes our brain a little more to pick that up to figure out that that's what we wanna do. So that's why I used another cup next to it because it really does help. You can do it without, but you can do it with the cup, and I'm telling you, it helps you big time. So we're really just mimicking the same thing on both sides. And I'm not even thinking about it. And I'm just trying to follow the image. And without thought, my brain is just reacting and picking up because I'm doing it the same thing in my non-affected side. So I gotta be careful because I'm trying to talk to you in the video and do this without really looking. All right, gonna put it back down. 
So I'm doing it with both just to show you the difference. Now I'm going to take this away. I promise you I'm not faking it. So because I now have to think about only focusing on my affected side, <laughs> Lord, that's when the goofiness kicks in and everything. Like, it's just, it's weird. Like, as you're an adult or you're older, even if you're a teenager, it becomes second nature to pick up a glass and drink without a thought. But after you've experienced the stroke and what that is is, you pretty much have had a disconnect with the brain. So the disconnect with the brain takes you back from, yes, you may be an adult, but it takes you all the way back to, what I wanna say, phase one, stage one of an infant, because your brain does not recognize that it's ever done that before. So the blessing is that that's only a disconnect on one side. So the dis disconnect on that side, we have to retrain that side where the side that we've learned over the X amount of years that you were born and figured out how to just live life. Thankfully, we still have that operation on that non-effective side going. So that's why it works with the whole mimicking of both sides and utilizing them at the same time. It's because we know what to do on the non-effective side without thought. When it goes to that affected side, we somewhere along the line, Basically, the screws got disconnected. They were disconnected. So we have to rewire, we have to reconnect those brain cells to figure out what to do on the affected side. So as I'm talking to you, the whole purpose of this is our reach and grab, getting our body back used to doing things without thought. So even if I don't have a cup in this hand, it's just the whole fact that I'm mirroring the same thing on that non-affected side helps me more fluidly groove and do things on the affected side. And this glass is still full, y'all, I'm telling you. So I'll put that down for right now. And I'll show you the whole proper phases of reach and grab. Reach and grab in this form of we're sitting back, arms are in, elbows in, close to your body, the proper form and we're gonna push forward. So even if we can use the table, this is another one I like to do when I'm demonstrating with other survivors. We can use the table as to slide across. When you're doing this, when I really, I don't want you to just take your whole body across. I want you to try to stay upright and really slide the hands forward. So therefore, we are activating the scapular lats and everything, let me turn shoulders to push forward and then driving it back. So getting that body used to working and getting more fluid movement in those shoulders. Because what we notice is, and I'm talking about myself as well, with that affected side, your mobility has shortened some from some, I'm not even gonna go with technical words, your mobility has shortened. And so now we have to get everything back used to moving properly. Like even now, I'm totally fine. I can move and do everything. But if you look from my right to my left, it's just not the same fluid movement. So things like this is going to help us open up and get the body back moving more fluently is what I'm trying to say. And this right here in itself, is a stretch at the same time. So if you're pretty tight in your scapula and your shoulder, just try doing this on the table. If your table does not slide, you can take, for instance, I got a paper towel here. You can take a towel. If your table or whatever you're doing this on does not have a surface, you can slide and you can use that to slide back and forth. It's helping you with mobility. Boom, we're gonna move this out of the way. Cause I wanted to go to a different cup here. See, I promise you, you just gotta really tell yourself, just do it. Sometimes, oh yeah, my shirt today says just God, not just do it, but that's the thought that came to my head. So just do it is, and I promise you, I'm always telling myself to just do it. And the meaning, the reason I'm doing that is because, hey, I once did it before, Tracy, just do it. Just do it, just pick it up. 
we put so much emphasis on, hey, that, that, that effective side doesn't work or didn't work. We get so used to only using the non-effective side. It's like, wait, hello, we have some function on that side or we have two sides. We have to really force ourselves to use it and to be more effective and be more conscious of knowing that you are not blessed with just one side. You were blessed with two sides. Yes, you had some, you had a situation over here on this side, but we have to do things to make it work again, basically. So just do it, I'm telling myself, as I'm telling you. So just do it. And I'm going to mimic with this one. Oh, Lord. What's just a little different on that side. And the only reason is, it's all in your mind. As I'm telling myself that I was going to drop it, but it's actually still in my hand. So whatever. That's why I try to keep the videos realistic because of the simple fact that you can see everything. Everybody goes through things differently. And me, myself, second guessing what I'm doing. And at the same time, trying to talk to y'all and not drop this glass. And so one thing I will say, I don't know if you can see, my fingers are not completely grasped around. They're kind of clenching in because in my brain, I'm telling myself, I think I'm going to drop it. So it's naturally, they're trying to clench the grab hold onto the cup, which in reality, I already had it in my hand. I didn't need to do that. I'm actually going to release it so I can grasp the hands back properly. Because what I want to do is put the cup down, but I can feel that my... I really can't tell, but it feels like my pinky or something is doing something and my wrist will not go flat. So, I gotta concentrate a little more to get that down. So, we're gonna try this again. Can't really see which fingers are on there. Oh, and that's what the funny thing is. Try to come close so you can see. The reality is my middle finger is not even on the cup is sitting on top of my index finger. So that's why I did feel weird. So just different things that the body begins to do, how it compensates to get itself back move, <clears throat> moving properly. So even though that's improper, my body has, for whatever reason, adapted to feeling comfortable doing such. So I'm gonna straighten it out And we'll straighten it out. And at the same time, that's something you may need to do and you should do. It's actually make a visible connection with what you're trying to do. It helps us. So it's another relation to the brain as we can visibly see. What's the proprioception? As the proprioception, with thing I, things I still do, like say first is working out. If I do something behind me or say first to try to do a lunge, taking my effective side backwards. I'm still not planting the foot down correctly and things like that. It's the proprioception of not being able to see and visibly connect something. When we've had that disconnect, we have to retrain it. So what my hand was doing without me looking at it was, hey, this feels comfortable. I think this is how you grab it. When I looked at it, it was like, wait, that's incorrect. And then easily I was able to correct it. So boom, we got our full glass of water here. So... The whole goal for this was to talk to you about the reach and grab, show you different ways of reach and grab, but also to talk to you with doing it with the full glass because the video I did before, the glass was empty. But the crazy thing is at the same time that I'm noticing that it's still in my hand and I'm not even thinking about it because it becomes second nature to boom. Now I do things I'm comfortable with. I'm always talking I'm all, and I'm a hand talking in the first place. So it's funny that my hand is moving and doing everything even though the cup is in it because... I've been doing so much with mimicking with the right and the left side. I'm mimicking even though the glass is still in my hand. So I'm moving back and forth. So, I mean, just another something we pick up. So while you're doing daily things throughout the house, if you're writing with your non-affected side, put a pen or put a marker or something in that affected side and just start mimicking so your brain can start recognizing what we do on one side, we should be able to do on the other. It may not be... So 100% are the best or the same, but we have, we have to realize and we have to retrain our brain and our mind. We have two of these. We once did it, we gotta get ourselves back to doing it again. So whole purpose of 
purpose of this video was to just to show y'all, and I'm gonna title this um, something, I said something about the era, fuel, fueling the brain with error. I don't know, something fueling the brain with error. So generally just telling you how an error helps to refuel the brain. Cause our brain recognizes, well, that was done incorrectly. Now we gotta figure out the proper way to do it so that it is correct. So reach and grab with error people is what we're talking about today. And since we're doing it and I've built up the glass with this, I'm going to go ahead and reach and grab hmm, to put the water back in the cups. And just that quickly, that fingers tried to stack itself on each other again, but whatever. And this one I will say, oh Jesus, is a lot more difficult for one because this glass is a lot heavier. This is probably about three pounds in my hand right now. And just the grip that you have on it, like it's not a full grip if you can see that. Show you my hand. So my fingers, my hand it has gotten comfortable with picking it up like this for whatever reason and my wrist is strong enough. So I technically can attempt to pour the water in here. Uh, I guess I am gonna try without reshifting the hand even though it's not the proper way to really hold something. And now my fingers were kind of stuck in a weird way, but whatever. So people, our reach and grab is what we're talking about here. Hmm, I wanted to show you something else. It's the easiest way to do this. Well, actually, I'm gonna do this in the next video. We're talking about mirror therapy. So anywho, I appreciate y'all just doing a reach and grab, show you some different things you do with error, proprioception, and things like that, and showing how error actually helps refuel the brain to learn that that was improper and figure out the proper way to do something. All right, let me know, comment below, whatever. Let me know if y'all need anything more specific on helping you with your rehabilitation or getting back to your independent lifestyle. I can be reached for a more detailed conversation at bodybytrace at yahoo.com. Uh, follow me on social media, bodytracefits. Appreciate y'all, love you, peace.